Hi, my name is Maddie Zastro, and today I'm going to be talking about thermogenesis in plants. This is the life cycle of the eastern skunk cabbage, and in my opinion, it's one of the most interesting plants in the world for a lot of reasons, but today I'm just going to be talking about one aspect of this plant that has made it notorious. As you can see, this plant has a pretty strange looking life cycle, where instead of growing leaves and then blooming, it blooms right at the end of winter when it's still cold out, and then grows its leaves through the spring and summer. And this plant has an ability that allows to do this that botanists have been studying for about 100 years now that we're just beginning to understand as of the past couple decades, and it's called thermogenesis. So these are pictures of the eastern skunk cabbage in bloom, and what it's done is actually heated itself up to about 30 to 40 degrees above ambient temperatures to burn through the snow before anyone else. Now, not only will it continue to do this for the next two weeks, but it will also detect the exact outside temperature over those two weeks, and it will change its internal temperature to match. And by doing this, it's creating its own little microclimate inside the flower itself. Now, to explain why this is so confusing from a biological perspective, we first need to understand that any energy that expresses itself as heat in a biological organism is lost, as in it can't be used by the cell. So by heating itself up to 50 degrees and zero degree temperatures, the cabbage is sacrificing a ton of energy by quickly metabolizing its stores and choosing to release the product as heat instead of using it for anything that is useful. Heating itself up doesn't help the plant at all, actually, and it could grow just fine without it. So why would it use that? Well, we figured out that by heating itself up, it's attracting the flies and beetles that pollinate it that have just crawled out of hibernation and does this by creating its own little microclimate that has just so com conveniently placed itself over its organs. So by doing this, it isn't helping the plant survival directly, but it is helping the survival of the species by making sure that it gets pollinated first. Now, usually when I tell people about this, the first thing that they think of is the potential for renewable energy. And about a year ago, I started considering this question more seriously. With a small grant from my school, I've made an experiment to test if it will be possible, with the goal being to create a voltage. This is a picture of me testing it out on a heat bulb because the flowers aren't open yet. It's an interesting study into the potential utilization of purely biological methods to create energy. I believe that this is one of the biggest reasons we have to study biology, botany especially. Nature has created thousands of wonderfully sustainable systems for generating energy, and with the current spotlight on our own generation of power, the skunk cabbage asks us a few vital questions about our own abilities. Thanks for watching.